Welcome to Heresy, the Horus Heresy talk show. In this video, we're going to be talking all about vehicles in the Horus Heresy. Are they really as bad as everybody says they are? So in this video, we're going to talk about vehicles' survivability, their firepower, their maneuverability, and then we're going to draw some conclusions to answer the question as to whether the general opinion that vehicles are not very good in this edition of the game is correct or not. But before we do that, if you do like the channel, please do leave me a like and a subscribe. And if there's anything in the episode you'd like to discuss or any feedback at all, please do leave me a comment on YouTube. Now on with the show. So the purpose of this video is really to talk about whether it's true or not that vehicles are not very good in Horus Heresy 2. Now I know not everybody holds this opinion, but it is a big topic of conversation and it is a thing that you see come up a lot people really concerned that they don't want to use their vehicles because they're just going to get blown up by all these new cheap LAS cannons and everything else. Most of people's issues with vehicles really stem from their survivability and their points cost, so that's what we're going to mostly focus on in this video. And what we're not really going to discuss is vehicles' ability to kill each other because if you are both using vehicles and shooting at each other, then you've, you've both got the same strengths and weaknesses. So really what we're thinking about is things that aren't vehicles and whether they are better options than taking vehicles. We're going to mostly focus on the best anti-tank guns when we're talking about the guns that we're going to be using. And yes, there are others. There are lots of different guns in the game, but we can't possibly go into absolutely everything. And while we are doing some of the maths in this, again, we're not going to get into all the maths, all the precise details. This is illustrative. The numbers are rounded a little bit. And I'll try to keep the maths succinct so it's not too boring for anyone who's not really into those things. And what are we talking about when we're comparing vehicles against other units? Well, really the units that are natural to compare vehicles against are Dreadnoughts, being another tanky shooty thing, heavy support squads being another way to get lots of guns, and also things like Javelins and tactical support squads, which are other non-vehicle ways to get extra firepower into your army. Let's talk about armor and survivability in general, and firstly let's just do some quick maths and calculations on what different armor levels have as a base level of survivability against different weapons. So I would recommend you pause this section of the video if you want to go over these numbers, but pretty much we're looking at the LAS cannon and the auto cannon as, you know, top end vehicle killing weapons, and also the missile launcher as just, you know, a thing with strength eight as a kind of control group. So here's the numbers. LAS cannons, obviously very good with Sunder at penetrating things auto cannons also not everyone realizes this but also pretty good at penetrating things because they you know often only pen on a six but they get two goes at doing it and the numbers can be quite high because of that rendering so this is what it looks like for av13 and 14 and then moving on to av15 you can also see that we've got some different numbers there and you get this uh interesting effect where auto cannons are actually the best weapon at destroying AV-15 vehicles generally just because they've got that much higher spike potential with the rend. Obviously the control group missile launchers can't do anything. And important to note, the mats aren't here for melter guns and multi-melters because in armor bane range, they will penetrate everything generally. So, you know, an average on two dice is a seven. So AV-30 and AV-14 are all getting penetrated, even on low rolls. AV-15 will be getting glanced on average and it'll be relatively easy for them to pen them on a slightly higher roll as well, generally needing an 8 with most of the melter weapons or all of the melter weapons. So these are the numbers for you to look at. Again, go back and check the video. I'll pause those if you want to go over them more, but that gives you the basics of what you need to look at. So what is shooting at our vehicles and how many points are they? Because it's fine to say a vehicle is easy to destroy if we shoot it with a thousand point unit, right? That's obviously going to destroy it but really when we're comparing things to figure out if vehicles are survivable or not you've really got to think about how many points of your opponent's stuff they're shooting at them with as well so a contemptor with four las cannons and ballistic skill five is 215 points a heavy support squad with five las cannons is 150 points five auto cannons is 125 or a tactical support squad with five melter guns and a rhino to get it there is 195 points as well. So these are the kind of things that we're thinking about when we're looking at what's shooting our vehicles. And here's some examples of the maths for different versions of these things shooting at stuff. So a Contemptor 
or a heavy support squad with five last cannons versus a predator, they both get 3.3 hits on average. One's got more BS and less shots. And that translates to 1.8 pens and 0.8 glances in general. So that is less than the three hit points on a predator. So without getting a six on a penetration roll with those last cannons to actually explode the predator, that means that on average, these units aren't going to kill a predator in one round of shooting. Now they are, are nearly there though. And the chance with the six added on top means that they normally will, but that's 150 to 220 points of models shooting at the predator to kill it. And in comparison, those same number of shots would normally kill almost three members of a heavy support squad. So when you think about, you know, what else those units could be doing, yes, they might blow up your predator, but they would also kill three fifths of a, of a five man unit as well, which isn't quite as much. But if you shoot the predator and don't kill it, depending on, you know, your weapon destroy results and that kind of stuff, the predator can actually be largely intact. You know, if you just get like, two glances or if you just get like an immobilized result or something like that or stop it from moving you might actually not degrade the predator's shooting ability at all whereas you're almost certainly going to degrade the shooting ability of shooting at a heavy support squad so it degrades in a different way and that, i'm not saying that that is better or worse but it is important to bear in mind that sometimes you'll shoot at a vehicle and it won't quite die and you will have actually not reduced its combat effectiveness whatsoever. And that's an important thing to bear in mind when you're considering vehicle survivability. Likewise, if we look at those same things shooting at a land raider as well. So again, 3.3 hits, 1 pen, and 0 0.8 glances. So that's 2.5 turns of shooting for 150 to 220 points of models to kill a 220 point land raider on average. Or you need a lucky 6. So again, that's quite a lot of firepower that that can absorb. Now, yes, on the one hand, you've got a chance of it just dying to a single last cannon. But on the other hand, your opponent's got a chance of shooting it and doing nothing but just glancing hull points off it, in which case it's not degrading its combat effectiveness at all. And when you compare that to the fact that that could be something else, like a unit of troops with last cannons or something instead of the land raider, you're actually coming off favorably because they would degrade over time and also for comparison shooting at a land raider is almost exactly the same as shooting at a contemptor so these last cannons would also take 1.8 wounds off a contemptor which is about the same point as a land raider once it's equipped so contempt is not necessarily more survivable there except for the lucky six taking the land raider out so that is obviously not an in-depth uh look at every single weapon but the point is that vehicles are not actually as non-survivable as I think they're sometimes made out to be. And basically, vehicles trade off small arms immunity for susceptibility to lucky shots with anti-tank weapons. Because, you know, them contemptors can just be shot by bolters. They can be shot by low-strength weapons, which can ping hit points off them. Heavy support squads can also just be killed by bolters very easily. Whereas vehicles are completely immune to that, which is something you've got to bear in mind. Vehicles do therefore become a little bit more all or nothing. They're either alive or dead with no in-between. Now, yes, they can take some damage on the vehicle table, but for the most part, their combat ability in terms of their shooting is either intact or not. Whereas other things like heavy support squads will steadily degrade, so vehicles work differently in that regard. And because vehicles don't degrade that much, an opponent shooting them and not finishing them off can be quite beneficial to you. You know, if your opponent shoots five last cannons into a predator and leaves it on one hull point, then yes, in theory, one more last cannon or one more shot can finish it off. But a lot of the time, units come in fives. And in order to finish that vehicle off, your opponent might have to shoot an entire other dreadnought or an entire other unit at it, which is super in your favor then because he's probably going to kill it. But then he's wasted a bunch of shots as well. Whereas again, versus units that degrade, you're always getting value. You know, even if you kill three Space Marines, you don't need to finish the other two off to have got value out of your first three shots. The difference between armor value 13 and armor value 14 is quite big, is a thing to bear in mind, but so is the points cost. So AV-13 vehicles do die much more easily, and there are obviously many more things that can kill them. But most AV-13 vehicles 
can you know fire out a line of sight like a Scorpius or are fairly cheap if you want them to be like a Predator or have four hit points like a Vindicator does. So AV-13 vehicles can actually be reasonably tough for their point cost is the point. Yes, if you tool them up with lots of stuff, they can get a bit expensive and that's where they get a little bit less good. AV-14 vehicles again, in about the same area as a Dreadnought survivability wise, but of course they are worse versus melter guns and auto cannons can pen them relatively easily whereas dreadnoughts have got that two plus save against them and need a four plus to be wounded so you know they do come off dreadnoughts do come off better than vehicles in that regard now let's look at the weaponry that vehicles bring which is you know another large part of the equation so a predator with two las cannons and effectively two strength eight auto cannons on that predator auto cannon which is a very very good gun is 120 points or 105 for the second to fourth members of the squadron as well now that's really cheap for two big auto cannons and two las cannons that's a lot of guns similarly if you do upgrade them with one of the more expensive turret weapons like a gravis las cannon or a magna melter that's 140 or 150 points and it's basically the same firepower as a heavy support squad for about the same cost more or less they're very very similar a Sabre is another vehicle I'm going to mention. So a very cheap vehicle, but it comes with a very good auto cannon. I'm not going to go into all the details of why the auto cannon on the Sabre is very good, but you just have to trust me that it's a very good gun and it can kill a lot of things. And that's only 80 points. Sabre is only AV12, but again, it has got that small arms immunity. The Land Raider, which I mentioned here as a battle tank, because the Land Raider, even though it is a transport, the 220 points brings that tough AV14 and four LAS cannons and potentially another decent gun as well that's actually pretty good for the points the kratos which can bring four las cannons and armor value 15 and a big main gun for about 400 points and sicarans which are bringing some very powerful guns but not necessarily much survivability for 200 points so this is what we're looking at and in general when you look at these for what you're getting compared to maybe just a bunch of infantry with guns or a dreadnought with maybe a couple of dual las cannons these mostly aren't bad the predator's certainly very good the saber's good the land raider you know a contempt of dreadnought with four las cannons and bs5 is 215 points the land raider is basically the same it's only bs4 but it's a transport and it's a vehicle which is a bit different so it's basically very very similar the kratos obviously you're paying in this configuration at least you're paying for the av15 which is very tough to crack it's not got a huge amount of guns for its points. You know, you're certainly paying a lot for the survivability there. And the Sikarans bring some very, very powerful weapons, which you can't really get equivalent to in other places, but they they really, really pay for those weapons. They're very expensive. So as a summary, just going through that, getting lots of guns is generally cheaper on infantry. It's much more efficient generally to buy you know, a heavy support squad or maybe a tactical squad with 10 plasma guns than it is to buy a similarly equipped vehicle. Vehicles definitely do pay a premium for being a vehicle. And, you know, a lot of people consider that being a vehicle is actually a disadvantage and and wonder why you would want to do this. But when you look at it really in the context of some of the vehicles I've just mentioned, like the Predator or the Land Raider, it's actually not too bad. They bring pretty good guns for their points compared to other things. But if you do tool them up, If you spend a lot of points on things like pinnacle mounted weapons or extra upgrades on the vehicle, you can start to make them expensive to the point where they're not really tough enough for the points that you're paying for them. So the key here really is to keep them either cheap or like a Kratos, make them armor value 15. So at least those guns might not be super efficient what you're bringing for the points you're paying but your opponent can't really take them off the table easily. The in-between where you pay lots of points for something that's not very tough, like a Sikaran, is where vehicles tend to be a little bit not so good. Or even a Kratos with armor value 14, even though the flare shield's expensive, you're still going to be paying 350 points for a tooled-up Kratos, and it's still quite easy to kill at AV14 for that point cost. So it's the middle ground vehicles that are the ones, I think, that people struggle with. Vindicators, great for their points, 120 points, a really good gun. The Scorpius, that can kill lots of Marines and do it from out of line of sight. 
really good vehicle options that you can certainly take. Every category of things in the game has got some options that when you look at them, they're less good. The Sakarans are certainly that for vehicles, but there's categories of that for troops, there's categories of that for flyers, there's categories of that for everything, and it doesn't invalidate the whole category of uh, unit that we're looking at here. Vehicles also do bring some capabilities that aren't available elsewhere as well. You know, the Scorpius launcher I've just mentioned, there aren't many big barrage weapons with Ren 4 that can fire from out of line of sight. That's not a common thing. So whether you like vehicle chassis or not, they certainly bring unique capabilities to the table as well. And then it would be uh, remiss of me not to also talk about vehicles' maneuverability. Now, heavily armed vehicles are more maneuverable than heavily armed infantry. That's a fact. They're about as maneuverable at Dreadnought because of the need to go at combat speed generally, but they do have the option to go a lot faster than needed. You know, it's not something you're going to maybe want to do very often, but if you do need to drive somewhere really fast, it's an option that Dreadnoughts don't have. Unfortunately, not being a scorer or denying unit does make this a lot less useful. Being able to get around the battlefield when you're actually just carrying lots of guns isn't really a thing that you need to do. So this isn't a super good benefit to vehicles, and I actually do think it would have been nice if vehicles were denial units. I think that's probably a thing they could easily stand to be. But that does make the maneuverability a bit less useful. But don't forget that a thing vehicles can do and a thing that vehicles do do in real life is block things from moving, block line of sight to your infantry, stop your opponent getting two objectives and all that kind of stuff. Vehicles are a brick that can move around and get in the way of things and you should use them like that when you can. And that is definitely one of the lesser well-used advantages of vehicles, particularly in Warhammer games. And other things that we might look at that are benefits to vehicles, well, you can get more firepower in a heavy support slot than you otherwise could. So you can take four Predators in a heavy support slot, and whilst you might not do that, you might be maybe take two or three, the most Space Marines you can get in a heavy support slot is 10. So even though you might consider the Space Marines more efficient, if you're playing larger points games, particularly and you're already squeezed on slots, you can get more stuff in your heavy support slot if you want more guns and if you've got other necessary vehicles in your army as well like spartans and land raiders vehicles also do become a lot better and more safer to use so we don't really have the same worries about spartans or land raiders whether they're really good or not because we often take them to deliver things like terminators to the enemy and once you've got them in your army taking some predators or some sicarans or any other vehicle at all is less of a problem because you've got more vehicles on the table if your opponent's shooting at your spartan he's maybe not shooting at your predator if you're shooting your predator he's not shooting your spartan so they all make each other better and it is important to note that vehicles can't be locked in combat so some of these other ways of getting guns into your army including dreadnoughts can just be locked in combat by the first thing that comes along you know a dreadnought against 10 units of tactical marines assuming they don't run away it can take the dreadnought three or four turns to get rid of them all Whereas a vehicle can't be locked in combat at all, and it can ram as an extra benefit as well. And these are things that are in vehicles' favour when we're comparing them to these other comparable units. So overall, where do all these things leave vehicles? Well, vehicles do bring some unique capabilities to the battlefield. We've just mentioned not being able to be locked in combat. They also do transport things, which is a necessary part of the game, but also things like the Scorpius launcher, as well are things that you can't easily get elsewhere vehicles do definitely trade off sometimes being one shot for degrading slower than other ways of being bringing big guns like dreadnoughts or heavy support squads don't have that issue with being one shot really but vehicles are immune to small arms where those things are not which is actually quite a big deal that people often forget because vehicles don't degrade much Opponents shooting them and not finishing them can be quite beneficial to you, which is not necessarily the case if you're bringing infantry based weapons. But it is important to note that AV-13 vehicles are definitely not main battle tanks, and I think this is where you know people maybe go wrong. If you've got a Predator with some guns on it, you can't just drive it up the middle of the battlefield into the teeth of the enemy's anti-tank guns and expect it to live. It's not going to. So using terrain flanking minimizing the amount of things that can see your vehicle and also supporting it with other 
non-vehicle units, or maybe, you know, you bring some anti-infantry firepower to destroy the enemy's cheap as cannons, leaving your vehicles to run around the battlefield unchecked by all the small arms that are left over. And you take those combined arms approaches, the vehicles become lots more valuable. And I think overall, one of the main conclusions from this video is I think the feeling that vehicles are easy to kill is incorrect. In the strictest terms, it's very easy to make an argument that dreadnoughts are just better, but vehicles generally do bring more guns than a dreadnought, and realistically, just play different roles. They work differently to dreadnoughts, so while in raw numbers they may be comparable, they do do slightly different things, and you can use them for different things as well. You definitely shouldn't be put off bringing vehicles in your army by the chatter and the perception that vehicles are not very good. They are definitely in a very reasonable ballpark compared to other perceived powerful units like Dreadnought or Heavy Support Squads. They might not all be perfect, and, it, and there may be some things that they're a bit worse at, but there are things they're better at as well. And they're not so expensive in points that they're outlandishly different to those units, so don't be put off bringing vehicles at all. Even if you do play on the more competitive side of things, Vehicles are still very viable. I would argue that things like 120 point or 105 point predators with the auto cannon and tool as cannons are super good ways to get survivable guns into your army or sabers with those auto cannons, particularly if you've got a way to flank them. Land raiders, even if they're not transporting anything, lots of these things can be good, even if you're being very, very competitive. Although you definitely want to avoid things like Sakarans if that's the way you, you play Heresy. I think spamming vehicles in previous editions has been replaced with a focus on Marines and, to a large extent, combined arms in this game, which is what's led to this perception that vehicles are bad. And, you know, I don't agree with it. I think vehicles are, are pretty good. Obviously, you're going to want to pick the correct vehicles, but there are lots of them. Combined arms is an effective way to play the game. Absolutely effective way to play the game, but importantly, it's also a fun way to play the game for you and your opponent. Like, if your opponent's bringing anti-tank weapons, giving him some tanks to shoot makes the game interesting. And sometimes, yes, they will die, but sometimes they won't die as well. You know, you've got it goes both ways with vehicles for all the reasons that we've mentioned, and it looks good on the tabletop as well. You're not going to bring vehicles. And then have one of those games where you, you know, really don't enjoy yourself because all your stuff's been taken off. And I know that the discussions on the internet might lead you to think that's the case, but I really don't think it's the case. So all in all, vehicles good, definitely worth using in your armies, regardless of what level you play at. And that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for listening. I hope it's been useful to you and I hope it's given you some insight in some maths and some interesting discussions as to why vehicles are a thing that is good in your armies in Horus Heresy, the Age of Darkness. If you enjoyed the content, please do leave me a like and a subscribe, and please do comment on anything that you've heard in the video. I'd love to chat with you guys about what your thoughts on this topic are. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.